When was the last time you looked up at the night skies to see the stars? I'm Yaki and I, CEO and president of Pluristem Therapeutics. As a young boy, I loved camping, building campfires, staying up until late, and looking, looking at the stars of the night. I remember seeing thousands, all of us remember seeing these beautiful nights with full of stars. Astronomers estimate that there are billions of stars, billions of stars in our universe, hundreds of billions. It's hard to tell. And they are saying that these stars are the building blocks of galaxies. I'm here to talk today about the building blocks of life, cells. Our bodies, and take a look at your bodies, they are built from trillions of different cell types that in a remarkable way, instead of competing and fighting among themselves or nutrition or space, they work in harmony in order to maintain our, our well-being. And everything on this planet, every organism on this planet, they are built from cells, from the largest sequoia tree, giant whales, to the smallest organism. Everything is built from cells. Actually, life on Earth begins and ends with cells. But the unique power of this tiny organism is not fully explored. Years ago, I was working for the high-tech industry for many years. And then I saw one graph that changed the course of my career, and to some extent, it actually changed my life. It was the graph showing the change in life expectancy in the last 150 years. And let me try. Who here in the audience is 45 or younger? Who is 45 and younger? Please raise your hand. Ah, we have young audience here. That's good. That makes my point. If I've been here in this room 150 years ago asking the questions, you guys that raised your hand, in average, you've been here alone. And for the rest of us, which are already over 45, not that much. Only in the last 150 years, humanity doubled its life expectancy from 45 in average to over 80. When I saw this graph, I immediately knew that I need to be part of the healthcare system in order to make sure that we will be able to continue to treat our elderly and patients with dignity and compassionate. We don't fully realize that, but you should know that we must change entirely our healthcare system, entirely. And the way that we are treating human beings, moving it from endless chronic, decades of decades of chronic treatments and end of hospitalizations to development of agents that will be able to regenerate and to heal our body. That's the only way to go. And this is exactly what cell therapy is about. At Pluristem, we are working with placentas, donated placentas after full-time delivery. You can see the placenta. I hope that all of you saw a placenta in their lifetime. And then we're using our technology in order to make these cells into therapies. Placenta is quite a remarkable organ. Actually, the U.S. National Institute of Health described the placenta as the least known organ, but probably one of the most important. Placenta coming from the unique situation in nature, which is pregnancy, that in a remarkable way, two human beings, the mother and the baby, coexist without immune rejection of the one against the other. And I'm sure all of you know that a mother can be a surrogate mother. She can carry a child which is completely, has completely different DNA, but still, she will not reject it. And this is the reason that we can use the placenta cells as an ideal source for cell therapy. I'm holding here in my hand a vial that contains about 100 million placenta cells. And I can inject it to anyone here in this room without genetic match or blood match. We have treated hundreds of patients already using this product. And once we administer the cells into the patient body, the cells starting to interact with the patient body. The same way as the mother will interact with the baby via the placenta, our, our cells, these placenta cells, have the capabilities to interact with the patient. They are receiving signals from the patients, and they are responding by secreting healing factors that leads to regeneration. I always love to say that the placenta cells, they are actually native speakers. 
they can understand the language of the body and to communicate with the body with the patient. So this is a different scale of drug, a drug with intelligence that has the ability of interaction. I heard over the years many stories about placentas that goes thousands of years ago in India and in China and in the US. But what we are doing in Pluricent, we brought the science and technology to understand this remarkable organ that we call it placenta. But in Pluricent, we understood very quickly that if we would like to have a product on a large scale, we should better control technology and manufacturing. We are using these systems. We call them bioreactors. Bioreactors. These systems were designed to mimic our bodies. They are mimicking the human body environment, and we are controlling each and every parameter that is possible. Temperature, pH, glucose consumptions. And by that way, we are providing the cells the most natural conditions for proliferation and expansion. This system is actually so effective that from a single placenta, we get enough cells to treat over 20,000 patients from a single placenta. And that's the power of this technology. And about a year ago, we understood that this technology is actually not limited to expansion of placenta cells. We understood that this is a much broader, robust platform. And today, after a year, we know that we can expand different cell types, human cell types, animal cells, and even plant cells. And now start to figure about the opportunities. I heard in the previous panels talking about food tech and agriculture and sustainability. Now think of the system. If we are controlling a technology that will be able to, to expand almost every cell type in mass scales in a reasonable cost of goods, it's actually important almost for every sector in the life science industry. I truly believe that all of us, we are at the beginning of a biotech revolution. And more specifically, cells have the capabilities to solve some of our major, most important problems. Because today we have the abilities to control and to leverage on these building blocks of life in order to make sure that we can produce different products, medical products, food tech, agriculture, and many other products that are so essential for us in order to maintain and to keep our sustainability. And that's something that can and will impact the course of humanity. And it's coming, and it's coming big time. People always ask me, I know I meet quite a lot of people globally, and they always ask me, what do you think about our future? How envision that? And what's, what are our chances as humanity to survive on this planet? And if I'm optimistic about it, well, I think that all of us know that we are facing some significant issues, change in the environmental, we are in the midst of a major healthcare crisis, and there are many other problems that we should tackle in the future. But let me tell you my point of view. On my daily basis, I meet the most extraordinary scientists. I get to hear amazing, mind-blowing ideas that each and every one of them have the potential to change the course of humanity and how it's going to look the future. And when I see so many good people working so hard in order to make sure that this world is going to be a better world for our, our children, I'm extremely optimistic about how our future is going to look like. We are just at the beginning of exploring this my, microscopic universe, the cells. But just to remind us that like stars on the night skies, cells represent a world of hope and opportunities. Thank you very much.